Here it is, the Jacob Truba hit on Alex Nylander. And I am going to rule that it is clean, but I would like to talk about it. I wouldn't suspend or anything like that. But it's his habit again. It's Jacob Truba's habit, his signature move. It's the explosion into contact and the shoulder shrug. Those two things are what make his hits so controversial and so dangerous when they don't need to be. In this case, it worked out, but it's hard to know how much of that is luck and how much of that is talent. From this angle, you see the puck's gone. He just looks like a player gliding in and, and going shoulder to shoulder. And you look at that and you think, what's wrong with that? Perfect hit. It's the thought process that concerns me the most when Truba enters a hitting situation. And here's what I mean. So that Penguins defender has the puck. There's a Rangers forward right at center ice. And as it happens... That Penguins player is going to shoot the puck up the ice. Now, right here, Trub is entering the screen. He sees the puck, and Nylander is about to cut across the blue line, and Truba knows he's there. He can see him. We can't, but he knows he's there. That Rangers player in the middle could tip that puck anywhere. He could steal it and get possession. He could deflect it off to the side or any type of angle. As it happens, it goes through. Now it's going to go to Nylander. But... Truba's still not sure what's going to happen with that puck. Is Nylander going to take possession? Is it going to bounce off of him and squirt free? Could Truba get possession here? He should still be thinking, I have a shot at this puck. He puts his stick down just in case that pass happens to deflect by. He's in great position to block that from going in. He's doing everything right so far. Now Nylander has deflected the puck away. Truba hasn't even had time to react to what's happened to that puck just yet. All he sees is a player going across the line, and he's going to extend out and get in his lane. And people are saying, well, it's perfectly clean because Nylander touched the puck. Truba did not know he was going to touch the puck until basically right this second. You guys say everything happens so fast, he has no time to back out of the hit. Well, he didn't even know he should be throwing the hit yet at this point. How did he have time to react to that puck being touched? He didn't. So my problem is, was he going to hit no matter what? That's a bad way to approach contact. That's where you get yourself into trouble. And if you're going to tell me, no, he's better than that, he wasn't going to hit until that puck was touched, then what you're telling me is that he doesn't initiate contact until right now, after the puck is gone. And he actually does have to change course. He was headed to his left, and he has to push off that back foot, as he always does, and drive himself outward and to the side. And as he does so, he goes up a little bit. So my issue is, when did he decide to make contact? Was it right now when he sees him coming? Because that's bad. Because that puck isn't even touched yet. So that's an overcommitment to hit him. And if it's now, well, now he's got to go out of his way to change course, which is dangerous. That kind of scenario, and don't get me wrong, I'm not comparing the incidents. This was a fairly clean body check versus a cross check. But situationally, it's not really any different than when Oshie tried to sidestep Larkin and Larkin reached out and cross-checked him in the face. That's an extreme example of that kind of scenario, but this is the same thing. Truba's, Truba is cutting across on a path and the opponent is stopping up and going to go by, so he needs to push out to the side and drive himself to his right back into that path. The question is, when did he decide to make contact? Is it now? Because if so, that's bad, because he doesn't know if... Nylander's even going to touch the puck at this point or get possession. He has no idea. He doesn't even really know now. Like, maybe he's got the super ability to process that puck being deflected right now, but I doubt it. And if he didn't decide, which he shouldn't have until right now, then right now it's too late to decide because that puck is gone. So that's interference. He actually is going to his left and puts his stick out and has all his weight to the left. 
And then after the puck is gone, well after the puck is gone, he has to transfer back over to his right and explode off that back foot and up into contact. So that indicates to me that that hit was actually initiated after the puck was gone, which should be a penalty. And like I said, if you're telling me it was initiated now, not after the puck was gone, then that's almost even worse because that means his mentality is hit no matter what, whether it's reasonable or safe or legal to do so. And look, I'm willing to give him the benefit of the doubt here. If you want to tell me that he had time to line himself up, process that that puck was chipped, and then initiate contact, and then deliver a clean check, all in this amount of time, then I don't want to hear you ever again tell me that a player was too committed to back out of a hit when there's dangerous contact. And you tell me he, he couldn't possibly react in time to make it safe he was already committed to the hit when a player turns their back or something. If Jacob Truba has this innate ability to make that split-second decision from the time that puck left Nylander's stick to be able to adjust himself enough to make sure that that was clean contact, then surely any other player in the league has the ability to make a last-second, last half-second last half adjustment to turn away from contact when it's no longer safe to do so. So which one do you want? Because it can't be both.